If you enjoy the content on this channel, please like and subscribe. Hostage is a 2005 American action thriller film directed by Florent Emilio Siri. The film was based on the 2001 novel of the same name by Robert Craze. The film stars Bruce Willis, who co-produced the film, as a police chief who takes the place of a negotiator when the family of a wealthy accountant is held hostage by three teenagers. The film mainly garnered negative reviews from critics and grossed $77 million against the $75 million budget. The film's plot roughly is the same of Cray's novel. The main difference is that the novel's complicated subplot involving a powerful West Coast Mafia crime lord, Sonny Benzer, was removed, with the film giving little explanation of Walter Smith's criminal associations. The film also makes the first group of hostage takers somewhat younger in age than depicted in the novel. In addition, the criminal syndicate in the film was portrayed as mysterious criminals rather than a regular mafia. Filming took place in Malibu area in western Los Angeles County. The exterior views of Smith's lavishly appointed house were filmed at a real house in the Topanga Canyon area between Malibu and Los Angeles. The interior scenes were done on sound stages in Hollywood. The character Mars, played by Ben Foster, was modeled after a Bay Area rap artist Mars by Robert Craze after a friend, Dennis Basharar, urged him to look into the horror call genre. In the movie adaptation, Foster strongly resembles the rapper. Jonathan Tucker's name was later changed to Dennis for the film. The movie's opening scenes were filmed in the Boyle Heights neighborhood of East Los Angeles, just east of downtown. The fictional city of Bristow Camino was possibly intended to be a representation of Oja or Moore Park. Bristow Bay is the name of Bristow Camino in the 2001 Robert Cray novel. Some fun trivia notes. Bruce Willis's daughter in the movie, Amanda, was played by his real-life daughter, Rumor Willis. Rumor wanted the part, but Bruce made her audition like everyone else before she got the role. The hair Bruce Willis sports in the beginning of the film is an elaborate realistic wig. The beard, however, is all Willis's. As the camera shows the wall of DVDs in Walter Smith's office, prominently featured is a copy of The Negotiator, a film released in 1998, likely the most well-known movie about hostage negotiators up to this film's release. Ben Foster and Michelle Horn were dating in real life during the filming of this movie. The word is used 89 times within the film. The reason why Tally's relationship with his daughter Amanda is so strained is explained in a deleted scene that Amanda had seen Tally attempting suicide in a fit of depression. When Tommy reaches for the DVD of the earlier version of Heaven Can Wait, it has been misfiled in the F section along with the other film, The Nest. That is the English name of director Florent Emilio Series' 2002 film, The Nest. Kevin Pollack and Bruce Willis also starred together in The Whole Nine Yards, released in 2000, and The Whole Ten Yards, released in 2004, and later in Cop Out, released in 2010. The following year, Bruce Willis and Ben Foster both appeared in Alpha Dog, but they shared no scenes together. In the Robert Craze novel, which this film is based upon, Mars is far more psychotic and brutal. For example, in the book, the scene in which Jennifer escapes from Mars happens when Mars is distracted while dragging the tip of a nail down her cleavage and digging into the skin above her heart. In the film, however, he just approaches her meaninglessly while taking off his jacket. The immolation scene with Mars was cut because of the rating. The scene was supposed to have a close-up shot of Mars's face melting off the bone. The director said that the scene would be far too much. When Mars, played by Ben Foster, shoots the policewoman at the front gate, she spins around to face the camera. In the commentary, the director said this scene, paying homage to the gunfight in Once Upon a Time in the West, released in 1968. In that movie, Henry Fonda spins around in the same way after being shot by Charles Bronson. In the book, Mars and Dennis first rob a grocery store and then kill the owner before fleeing and they choose the Smith house as a random place to hide from the police. Whereas in the film, they deliberately invade the Smith house after the following them home with the intention of stealing the car. The on-screen body count is 15 or 16 if you include the dog. When Tommy sneaks into his sister's room to get her cell phone, on the back of the door is a poster of the tower card of the tarot deck. This reference foreshadows great violence and destruction of the house by fire, but also fool's revelation and redemption. The fool is Tally, played by Bruce Willis, and his revelation is how much he loves and needs his own family. When Tally tries to re-establish contact with the boy by cell phone, he shouts, Tommy, can you hear me? This may be intently a quote from the song by The Who, a song also featured in the film Tommy, released in 1975. Now this is one of those films that I've seen time and time again but never really watched fully or completely. It is however one of those films that does haunt me and I think Ben Foster turns out one of the most eerie and scary performances of his career. Ben Foster is a really truly fine actor, very versatile and diverse. Here of course he plays the psychotic Mars with absolute vicious glee. And the way he goes about ruthlessly and callously murdering people. Not to mention the haunting way he menaces and gleefully toys with Jennifer Smith here, played by Michelle Horn. 
almost as if she is a mouse being caught by a cat, is well fascinating, intriguing. And really for me, it's Ben Foster's menacing performance that really makes this film work in any sort of manner. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said here for Bruce Willis, who completely overacts in this role and is really not believable here as Police Chief Tally. Willis can act every now and again if he chooses to, but in this one he looks strained, almost lost within the script, not understanding quite what his emotions should be bringing forth. This is a film that could have really been so much more. The story is actually quite fascinating, the characters nuanced and layered, yet I feel in the hands of a better director you really could have really found something quite special here. Maybe also casting a stronger lead would have helped as well, but instead the film sort of plops to a predictable ending. Don't get me wrong, I actually think this is quite an interesting film, quite good. Layered and fascinating, with some truly gripping and tense moments. But instead director Florent Emilio Siri relies on the true and trusted cliches of action movies. And Bruce Willis tries so hard to find any sort of emotional depth, he really just loses his way completely. As I said earlier, this is certainly not a bad action thriller, but it could have been so much better. With the right casting, a better director, and a much more tighter psychological script, you really could have found something quite special here. And if not for the fantastic Ben Foster performance, and some incredible visuals, allowing the tension to really fill the screen as you're taken on this ride of violence and mayhem. I feel too the brothers here, Jonathan Tucker, who plays Dennis Kelly, and Marshall Orman, who plays Kevin Kelly, Dennis's younger brother, turn out solid performances as well, as they invoke some sort of sympathy towards them, even though they are technically the bad guys, but you do really see that it's Mars, of course, leading the charge. As I said, this is a film that could have really been so much more. It's got a good story, it really is tension-filled, and some fantastic acting performances and great visuals, yet for some reason it just falls flat, and I do think that's a lot to do with casting Bruce Willis here, as Willis just hasn't got enough charisma and panache to carry this role. A film with great potential, yet terribly cliched and with a poor performance by Bruce Willis, but an excellent one by Ben Foster. The Hostage gets a 7 out of 10.